Hello everyone, today we have a Maria Hill deck. This one does use Iron Lad. If you don't have Iron Lad, another solid four cost card could be slotted in here instead. But I do like that he has a lot of really good pulls. If you're gonna hit your Devil Dino, great. If you hit Captain Marvel, that is a lower cost Captain Marvel that can rove the board after the game ends. Or you could pull any of your card generating cards, a Jeff. Just a lot of really good pulls in this deck for Iron Lad, but he's not gonna be one that you use every game. But I would say that Zabu is core. You can replace Iron Lad, you can replace Jeff. They're just good value in general and good flexible cards to have in your arsenal. And so with the change to Maria Hill, she went from generating a one cost card to generating a one or two cost card. And so this opens up the possibilities or the possible cards that she generates so dramatically. So sometimes you're gonna generate an additional Zabu. You'll generate a Jeff. And the card that she generates, if it's a two cost, can be discounted by your Quinjet. So every once in a while, you'll get some value there as well. Not something you could lean in on or use every single game, but there are some times she's gonna give you just the resource you need to give you that slight edge in your game. And if she doesn't, then you're buffing up your Devil Dino. So I think it's a win-win regardless of what you pull. And then the same thing with Agent Coulson, with Zabu, with Quinjet, he offers phenomenal value. Not only do you get cards that curve on those next couple of turns well, you can also reduce them and then you're able to play more value than your opponent. And just overall, I've had quite a bit of success with this list. I'm hovering around a 60% on the ladder. I haven't taken this for a spin on Conquest. I will do that a little bit later, but I think this is very viable. There's a lot of counterplay to it. There's a lot of options that you can go with and find ways to win. So we're gonna keep the deck explanation relatively short. All right, first up we have Kata. The first location is Sanctum Sanctorum. So we're not able to play directly there. Uh, but with this deck, we do have several ways to impact those harder to reach locations, stormed locations, locked down locations. Um, we, we can play for Jeff directly there. We have Captain Marvel that can move across the board for us. Um, and then we have the newly updated, changed, buffed Maria Hill. Now, instead of being locked to just the one cost, she'll give you a one or a two cost card. And so we're going to go ahead and play it, see what she generates. There's a, I'm sure that there's a very small chance that Maria Hill could generate another Maria Hill and it could just go on this endless loop. Wow, we get a Zabu from Maria Hill. It is phenomenal. We don't have anywhere to play it though, unfortunately. Um, with Dark Dimension, we won't be able to discount all of our cards. Either way, what a beautiful Maria Hill pull. We all know that Agent Coulson is really solid in giving you those curve cards. So a three cost into a four and a five cost. Uh, Maria Hill isn't quite there, but there is a chance that she now allows you to uh, get benefit from Quinjet, reducing a two down to a one. Uh, in just overall, the uh, I think the average value of the card that she provides should be a little bit higher now than it was before. But we're gonna go ahead and start stacking the Dark Dimension lane since, I mean, they have the ability to change Luke's bar eventually. But I think we do something like Iron Lad, we will hide a Captain Marvel in the Dark Dimension. And then maybe on the last turn, we, we drop the Jeff into the Sanctum Sanctorum. Uh, we could hide a Shang-Chi in the Dark Dimension as well. To make sure that we can win that location, it's a little bit of a surprise factor. So we're able to maybe coax them into staying until the end of the game uh, a little bit more so than we would otherwise. So they do, ch wow. Uh, so they do change the far right location. It turns into Lamentis. And so they draw all out the rest of their cards. So do we though, unfortunately. We could either do a Captain Marvel or we can do Devil Dino here and fight for this location. Our Iron Lad is no longer gonna pull anything, unfortunately, uh, but we could do the Devil Dino. Next turn we could do Jeff plus Agent Coulson to make sure our hand is really big, give us a good chance of winning the Sanctum Sanctorum. Now, if they have something like a Doctor Doom, unfortunate, uh, but with Lamentis, I think that hurts both of our game plans, both of our strategies quite a bit. And so I'm not sure they're gonna have the cards that they need to get that additional reek. All right, so they do eventually finally play into the Dark Dimension. They played just one card there. Uh, let's go with Jeff. We can go with Agent Coulson to generate additional cards. I think we do it into the Dark Dimension lane. And then I think we just hold the Quinjet. We're not gonna win Lamentis, and so that's fine. We don't, we don't need to win Lamentis as long as we win this other one. Now we could always do like Agent Coulson plus Quinjet into Lamentis, but I think it comes down to if we win Sanctum Sanctorum or not. 
because I think we will have the Dark Dimension locked in. They did snap. We're going to go ahead and stick it out. I'm okay with the four cube, uh, the four cube wager or risk here. They play an Ant-Man. They have the Thanos. So it looks like maybe a Spectrum deck, uh, like a Spectrum Khazar Zoo Flood deck. They do have the Devil Dino. They right now have only five cards in their hand. Once we get Agent Coulson, he's going to generate that additional hand size so that we should be able to buff up our Devil Dino and be able to swing the power level in the middle back in our favor. The Jeff was enough to give us the Sanctum Sanctorum, and then the Devil Dino stack was enough to swing the other location. We will take the four cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Malazan. The first location is Dream Dimension. So turn five is going to be a little bit rough for things like uh, Captain Marvel. They use a Yondu, so they may be trying to navigate a new uh, Galactus deck, which, I mean, they'll probably be able to get Galactus to trigger in the Altar of Death, which is a little bit scary because we won't be able to play anything there. We won't really be able to protect it. They may not have enough power there afterwards, but it would force a guaranteed tie at the very least. They have the Yondu. It could also just be a regular destroy deck. I've seen those kind of increase in popularity uh, ever so slightly, especially with the Galactus being brought down. Uh, a lot of people are now putting that just into a destroy shell instead. So we have some pretty good cards for our Iron Lad to pull. I'm also curious about the information that White Queen could provide. Uh, she could let us know if they have a Galactus, if they have maybe a Knoll, a Death. At this point, we'd be able to pull that same resource from them. Part of me wants to, part of me wants to do that. Yeah, we're gonna go with the White Queen just to get some information. I think the Iron Lad has a really good chance of pulling into something phenomenal, but at the same time, I'm not sure it's worth it. We do get their Death, so now if they use a Killmonger, they destroy these rocks. We get the same benefit out of this out of that destruction as they do. And so now we can go with our Iron Lad. I guess maybe we save the Iron Lad. Since we have Shang-Chi left in our deck, the, really the best pull for us would end up being Doctor Doom. I don't know that that's worth the risk right now. I'm gonna try to block their destruction. We're gonna do Cosmo in the left lane. Next turn we can do Jeff and then move it into the Altar of Death to find a way to win there. Um, but I think this will cap out the Dream Dimension and we are gonna snap into it. Assuming that they use like a Carnage, assuming they use like a Deathlock, they do have the option for Killmonger still, and it wouldn't have to be in the Dream Dimension lane, but we're hoping that we can uh, take our initiative and, and swing it back in our favor. They do use the Killmonger. They use it in New York instead of in Dream Dimension, so that it does still go off, but we're still getting the same benefit out of that death and that destruction as they do. Unless they have a Null, but with the Rocks, with the Nova, with the Yondu, it's not going to give them as much value as one a null as something else and so i think the death is going to be the biggest resource for us i'm going to do death into dream dimension we're also going to play our jeff that way we can move it over into the altar of death that should allow us to have that lane comfortably locked in we have shang chi so we can always maybe move cosmo and then try to position a shang chi counterplay to like their death Ooh, they get bucky barnes into the altar of death and so now the jeff moving over there is not quite enough to fully win it for him. We could do a gamble with Iron Lad, but I think it's going to be a little bit safer for us to just go something like Captain Marvel here. We'll move Jeff into the Altar of Death. Captain Marvel will move after the game ends. She should move into the Altar of Death as long as we can win one of the other two locations. We should be okay. I'm not going to move our Cosmo or stack any of our other cards, and we'll see. If they move their death, we would have been able to do something like a Shang-Chi, but... Okay, so they do have the Null. They have a Squirrel Girl. The Null is going to win the right lane. We win the left lane. Captain Marvel is going to allow us to win the middle location, swing it back in our favor. Their Null wasn't huge, but it would have been a very potent resource. Had they kept their death in the left lane, that wouldn't have been enough to win it. They had to stack both of their big cards, have enough power to overcome what we had in the left lane already, and then the Altar of Death is just a little bit beyond that reach. So we will take the second four cube game in a row. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Star Jelly. The first location being Murder World. Not great for us, but that's okay. We can easily just not play there. Sinister London becomes kind of interesting with things like maybe Cosmo. Uh, we could do a Devil Dino there later. We have uh, a couple of Doctor Dooms that could go wide. But I think starting off, we are just going to do uh, maybe just the Zabu. If it goes into Murder World and gets destroyed, that's okay. We really only need one. And honestly, I'm not completely sold on it taking up space 
uh, in the Sinister London. I don't know that it's going to be worth having that extra space there. So I'm going to go ahead and do Iron Lad and Quinjet. After that, we can start our card generating cards. So we can use White Queen. We can use Maria Hill. Um, we will draw some additional cards from Asgard, or we should, especially with the next card of that we're going to top deck being Devil Dino. Ooh, they have a... Wait, no, they don't. They have a morph? Why? Nobody runs morph anymore. All right. Let's go double card generation. Um, then maybe we do... Maybe we do something like Cosmo plus Maria Hill to reload our hand even further. We can lock in, make sure that they can't kill us with the Devil Dino lane. And I think overall it just becomes a lot easier to, to manage. I'm still confused by the by the morph, and that's all that we've seen so far. I have a leech. Okay, that's important to know. And a Mr. Negative. What a wild deck from Star Jelly. What a wild deck indeed. So it Asgard does reload our hand. This one is safe. I'm torn between doing uh, Cosmo here or Devil Dino. If we don't, uh, if we don't do, Leech is no longer on reveal, so we're not able to block it with a Cosmo play. But our Devil Dino would become susceptible to like a Shang Chi if they go with their path, because we're not going to be able to protect it with our Cosmo. We're gonna roll the dice. We're gonna play the Devil Dino. Hope that, I don't know, maybe we can outpower them. Maybe they don't play, maybe they don't play the, uh, ooh. The magic is wild, because now with the leech play, what are they, and then a kitty pride, I am so confused by your deck, Star Jelly. Like, no idea, like, you could have an inverted Iron Man, inverted Mystique, all kinds of crazy stuff here that's gonna be very hard for us to overcome. Uh, let's do, let's do Maria Hill in the left lane. And then we're going to do a double Cosmo. We need to make sure we win this one and this one. Uh, the Cosmo is already here, the Cosmo here. So it, I don't think it matters if Cosmo jumps over into Limbo or not. And so I think we're okay. Ooh, they do go with a massive blood here. Oof. Hopefully it's some kind of on reveal and we're going to block most of it with Cosmo. Kitty Pride is fine. Kitty Pride is fine. That's a lot of Kitty Prides. Sunspot is fine. Ironheart? What kind of deck are you? I'm so confused, Star Jelly, by your deck. And that is one thing that I noticed with <laughs> this update, is that the decks that you see now are just so crazy. Like before, this is where the competitive decks would be. So you'd oftentimes run into High Evolutionary. You'd run into all kinds of stuff. But now the ladder is just filled with uh, wildness. Absolute wildness i'm not gonna play anything here we're just gonna we're just gonna let this one ride hope that our 28 power in mid is enough there is there could be a scenario where they have enough burst with like an inverted iron man that they can win the sinister london lane but we don't know uh so the duke two kitty prides are, are not gonna do it that's that's a lot of cats this man is a is a is a fan of cats I mean, we won. We will take the two cubes. We will take the, the creative decks where we can. Let's go ahead and take it. We'll jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Solar. The first location is Washington, D.C. So if we get a Dr. Doom, we can buff up the the Doom bots that go into Washington, D.C. Uh, otherwise, we don't really have much that benefits there. I'm going to go ahead and start with Jeff into the New York location. We can move him out. Jeff is just one of those flexible cards. Like he's a low cost and he's that safe bet. He is that safe play at two cost where Silk, you get more power output, but you can't really control where it goes or how it functions or where it's going to be by the end of the game. We can do Agent Coulson here. Get a three, get a four and a five cost card, or we can go ahead and play Zabu. I'm torn between the two. I think we're going to do Zabu. I assume they probably have Storm. Assuming that they had Storm, we should have done, oh, the Cosmo. Okay, so they play a Wasp outright in a high evolutionary deck. Whether this is Lockjaw Rotation or just uh, Soak and Absorb or Affliction, the Wasp is wild here. All right, we have really good pulls. We have Quinjet, not the best, but decent. We have Maria Hill, not the best, but decent. 
White Queen will give us some insight. Maybe we get an Evolved Hulk. Captain Marvel will have a four cost or three cost of Captain Marvel instead of five. And then Doctor Doom would be fantastic as well. Since there is the chance of a Doctor Doom pool, I'm going to I'm not going to play Iron Lad into Washington, D.C. directly. We're going to play it over into Murder World and then we will kind of let the rest of the game fly. We get White Queen. So we do get some information about what kind of cards they have. Magic. Magic has seen an uptick in popularity, I have noticed. Where do they do the magic play? And do they use the magic play, I guess, is uh, is also a viable question. I think they changed New York. Because of that, no, they have initiative, so we won't be able to stop it anyways. So in that case, let's go with something like just, just like Devil Dino. We'll go Devil Dino into Washington, D.C., Ooh, they use Thing and not Magic, so they opt to not go with the Magic line. Oh, yeah, yeah, from the White Queen. Okay, and we know that at least two turns ago, they did not have the Evolved Hold, and so they did go with some Soak here. Do we go Doctor Doom? We wouldn't really be able to do much here, I, I, I fear. All right, I think I'm going to do some Strange Maneuvering. We're going to keep Iron Lad here. We're going to move the Devil Dino into mid, we're gonna move Jeff over? No. We'll move Jeff over into Washington, DC. I don't know. Depends if they shift some cards around uh, and where they play their resources, if they have any big ones. So the Devil Dino is pretty big, or he's gonna be pretty big in New York. We get the, uh, the advantage in Washington, DC. I think we get the advantage in New York as well, just barely, but we do beat the, uh, the not the high roll, but we beat the high evolutionary deck that did run the Hulk on the last turn to massively, massively overpower whatever we had in one of the lanes. We were able to secure the win. Not a comfortable one. I feel like every time you win against a high evolutionary, it's never just like, oh, I blew that one out of the water. They had no chance. I feel like there is always an, an element of if they had played a little bit differently, they had a chance to win. We will take the two cubes where we can. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Human Gamer. Maybe. Maybe we do. Maybe they're AI. First location is Monster Metropolis. They play Nebula into the middle location, interestingly enough, which is not great for them. Um, let's go ahead and play our Jeff into this middle lane. That is going to make sure that Nebula gets destroyed and then we can move Jeff out later. Uh, so very unfortunate that they played it into mid and that is what revealed. So we will go ahead and make sure that Nebula gets destroyed. We can then move Jeff to safety, which is going to be perfectly fine with me. Let's... Let's do Zabu here. Let's do Zabu, and I am going to move Jeff into the left lane. Now, playing Zabu into Expansion, since we're going to get a card that just randomly generates in Expansion, I don't want Jeff over there, leaving only Monster Metropolis as a viable space. They could do a Storm. Um, this looks like a High Evolutionary, maybe Affliction, maybe Soak style deck. And so, uh, Storm would make sense in Warrior Falls, but... Ooh, High... Oh, no. No. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't accept e anything that just happened there. Not a single piece of it. Oh my gosh, that was awful. All right, before they do any kind of like lockdown or Professor X or Storm, I'm gonna take out this Giganto that they got. They got a great resource. We got a liability in the Heimdall shifting our Zabu into Warrior Falls. Oh, it's a rough life. All right. So their sunspot's going to soak. That's going to, over the course of the game, end up being pretty big. But do we go Iron Lad here? Or we could always go Agent Coulson. Nah, let's go Iron Lad. We don't know what it's going to pull, but this will be a higher power point than the Shocker. But also a Shocker. They go ahead and change that middle location. And so it's weird using that on five. I mean, I understand why they used it, but it's still strange to see it come down on five when you don't really have as big of a, an impact on that last turn. They have the lead in two out of the three lanes already. If they do a Doctor Doom, we lose. But if they do a Doctor Doom and we do anything else, we could overpower that five power play in the left lane. Now, if they do like a Hulk, then we'll win. If they do like a Hulk and split it between a couple of lanes, we'll win. That's what I'm going to... I don't think they're going to do Dr. Doom. I don't think they're in a good enough position to do Dr. Doom, knowing that it can't win them the expansion lane. 
So they do double stack in the X-Mansion. Okay. Do they soak any? Yeah, they do soak with their Sunspot, right? They soak at least one. Is that... Oh, never mind. That's fine. That's fine. They can soak with their Sunspot. It's okay. We don't, we don't need the uh, we don't need the win in Monster Metropolis. And actually, even if they didn't soak, I was thinking this was the location that doubled the highest power card, not give them plus three base. <clears throat> so they would have still won the left lane, even if it, we had not went with that one. We do uh, hold down the win. Not not a very comfortable win, but we are able to hold it down against the uh, I think Affliction High Evolutionary deck. We will absolutely take it. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Shackleton. The first location is the sewer system. And so we're not going to play our Quinjet there, but we do have it to potentially discount the card that Maria Hill generates for us. Now that she can generate a one or two cost card, you have quite a few valid pulls that you get from her. And we do get a Rocket Raccoon. It's not the best. We don't get a benefit from the Quinjet. Ooh, what? outright play viper I'm, I'm guessing that's for tempo so seeing the viper i'm thinking sentry i'm thinking maybe valkyrie i'm thinking debris carnage to clear up the negative void maybe i don't know let's go ahead and try and let's go ahead and try and place our rocket raccoon ah we got the read wrong all right we do play our jeff into mid that's the roving resource they have a Thor with a viper what so confused by your tactics my friend Let's play Zabu. Uh, I'm not going to stack my ongoings. We're going to play Zabu into mid. And we do have Jeff that can move out. So even if they try to cap us out in the Pet Mansion location, they're not able to. The Wong is a little bit scary. Because now they could do du double Mjolnir that they top decked right away. Oh my gosh. And now they could do, what, a double... Double a lot of things. Oh man. Alright. I am going to do a Doctor Doom. Eventually, we're going to use Shang chi in this lane. But if we happen to draw like an Iron Lad or a Cosmo or an Agent Coulson, actually anything we draw next turn, we could use in tandem with the Shang chi That way, we're not giving up any additional energy. We're using our energy to the max thanks to Titan. They have a Black Panther. What lane do we focus on now? An Odin here. That is what they're going to use is an Odin. Not an Arnim Zola. Right? Right? Oh, man. The potential for an Arnold Zola here is wild. And Odin would be very, very big. They would be expecting it to make their Thor very, very big. Actually, if they do Arnold Zola, that's going to push Black Panther here and here. We can win this location. We have the Shang-Chi that's going to take out the Thor. A little bit of a Thor subject to me. Actually, we're, it's not. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do Iron Lad into the left lane. I assume that we can win the Pet Mansion location as is. I guess they only have to do something bigger than 10, right? Yeah. There's no way they don't do something in the Wong lane. Uh, ooh, okay. Polaris, that's fine. We're still viable. They could do a Doctor Doom. Oh, the Gambit is wild. The double Gambit. They did have Odin that they could have used, but they opted to not do it. The Shang-Chi is going to allow us to at least tie this Titan location courtesy of Polaris. Without that, we wouldn't have tied the right location. Did we win? That was it incredibly close a lot closer than i imagined whenever i saw them hang all of that power on the board that is the only reason i can't get behind decks that use like the wong the odin trigger because it floats so much it's so telegraphed if the opponent doesn't have a counterplay to it it's great it can do some absurd numbers but if they do like a cosmo a shang chi it makes it really tough to navigate and comfortably find those wins or those snapping points when you know that you have beyond a reasonable doubt that advantage. We will take the two cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into one more. All right. Next up, we have Tobert. Uh, good old Goose Tobert. The first location is the Shadowland. We're not going to be able to do much with it. Oh, and then Monster Island. I I'm just imagining if they were running a Galactus deck, how awful these locations just made it. So the Lizard comes down. They weren't, but it, it, was, it, it was a possibility. From Maria Hill, we get Quicksilver. That's two games in a row she's generated a one-cost card. It's kind of... Uh, wow. What are these locations? We have two cards we can play, but I don't think it's even worth it to take up the board space right now. We're going to do the Quinjet. Just for giggles. 
Uh, we're gonna do the Quinjet into Monster Island, but this lane space is wild, absolutely wild. The Maximus comes down. Let's go ahead and do our Shang-Chi early. I don't want them to be able to block it. I don't. I, I want to be able to swing this location back in our favor um, and then put it on them to swing it back or win it back. Killmonger does clear up a bunch of space. Thank you. Thank you, Tobert. That was, that was, <laughs> you, you did us a solid. What kind of deck are they running though? It could be a Silver Surfer, uh, like a strange, so, no, nah, the, the hood doesn't make sense in Silver Surfer. Just good card, good value deck. We have our Doctor Doom to go wide, but we're not going to be able to fill up the Savage Lands anymore. We could do Iron Lad on the off chance that it pulls into like Jeff. We can move it across the board. Let's do that. Let's do Iron Lad, and then we'll, we'll we'll navigate, and then we'll see from there. It does pull into Jeff. Strangely enough, the Mr. Fantastic comes down, which is still in line with, like, a good card, good value. I would imagine they probably do a Doctor Doom here. Is Doctor Doom the play for him? If so, I think this is our play in response. They could do leader. They could also do leader, right? Good card, good value. We'll typically run the leader play. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it, but we are going to do this and see. If this was for more cubes or if we were trying to climb, I think I would retreat out of this one. It's just, it's not a certain thing. Like they could, the doctor, oh, they do go with the Doctor Doom. So our initial gut impression read was correct. We are able to swing it back in our favor, playing against what I thought was going to be the play. Then I started second guessing myself. We are able to hold down the left in the middle location. Had that been a leader play, we wouldn't have been able to combat it. But, but as is, we were able to hold it down versus what I think was a just a good card list. And we will take the two cubes. And that is where we're going to go ahead and end the video. Overall, I've had a lot of success with this deck. It has been on ladder. I haven't taken this for a spin in conquest mode yet. I will do that a little bit later, but overall, I think the change to Marie Hill was good. Uh, I do like the variance, but it does feel weird that you don't know what value of the card you're going to get is. I would almost rather it be like set at just a two. I, I get that you don't want it to be too strong and having a guaranteed two cost for a two cost does get kind of iffy, but it just feels bad. Sometimes you're going to get a Quinjet. Other times you're going to get a Zabu that helps with you with your entire game plan. Other times you're going to get a Hitmonkey, a Jeff. It makes it so much more variable. Not quite to the level of Agent Coulson, but I do think it's a valid slot in, especially in like Dino decks, that you want to generally have a lot of cards already in your hand. But I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.